Hello, I'm Larson the Wolf, and I'm joined here today with Rick from the Henry Game Show. Say hi, Rick. Hey. <laughs> solid intro, Rick. I mean... <laughs> uh, what do you, you want to talk say, about man? Earthbound? Uh, ooh, uh, biggest fan of Earthbound, you love it. Uh, the fans are going to love you. Oh, I fucking hate Earthbound. <laughs> We're talking about Earthbound, by the way. Uh, TLDR, 1 out of 10, what do you give it? <laughs> Oh my god, for fuck's sake. I don't like numerical scores. Uh, for my personal enjoyment, I give it like a 5. But like for um, the objective score, that like uh, as a critic I'm, obli I'm obliged to do it. So it's like, I give it a, a solid 8. Mm. Uh, if we're gonna do that, personal score, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's got age on it guys, I don't, I'm sorry. I gotta give it a 6 or a 7, and I have to agree with Rick. It's probably got an 8. Not because uh, it does a lot of neat new stuff, and I think that its art style and the way it holds itself up at the time was pretty novel. I just finished it. Uh, I finished the Mother series a while back, and uh, I was telling Rick when I was going through about halfway through Mother 1 that I was going through Mother 1, and he texted me back, Oh dear God. No. No, uh, <laughs> don't do that. That game sucks. <laughs> oh, Mother 1, no, like... I don't know about Mother 2 exactly, but like, Mother 1 is a piece of crap. But like, uh, Mother 1 my opinion not is not age well, no. Oh no, like, Mother <laughs> Mother 1 is like the fucking. It's like the traditional RPG that sucks. Yeah, yeah, it really is. But the thing is that it wasn't a big. RPGs weren't really a big thing then. It was kind of blazing the path. But, uh, we're talking about Earthbound right now, so. Yeah, like, Mother 2. Yeah. I actually kind of liked it. I don't I don't know if I'm a sadist or what's up. I know you don't like RPGs. That's a thing. Specifically JRPGs. Yeah, specifically JRPGs. Uh but I personally found it charming. I like the new style they had. I like the like uh, the western uh children metropolis kind of deal they had with it instead of having enemies that were carrying swords and had magic. They had kids that used psychic abilities and had like bats and slingshots oh. and like all this crazy stuff. I thought that was really cool. So it's basically Mob Psycho 100. It is. Mob Psycho 100, I'm pretty sure, was just someone wanted to make an Earthbound anime but didn't want to bring it up. Like, 100%, <laughs> there's like a cult with happy people in it. Oh my they, god, There's yes. psychics. There's a psychics, but like, it's not weird, but it's not common. Which is exactly how Earthbound treats psychics. Man, like, alright. I can give you that. Mother, Mother 2, Earthbound, whatever you wanna call it, is honestly really charming, it's fucking good. I'm not gonna act like, oh, this game sucks because I don't like it. It's just that I'm not a fan of RPGs. And as I was playing the game, I was kind of like, hating myself. <laughs> because like, I was playing the game over, like, over my brother's PC, he had, like, an emulator, and yes, I used an emulator because I'm not fucking spending my money after a cartridge. Yeah, it's okay, I emulated it too. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I had to go to the beginning of the game five times because the emulator kept crashing, and that fucking beginning, man, that's probably, like, um, I don't know, man, it's, like, the worst beginning I ever experienced. <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck you were talking about. I liked the beginning. <laughs> I don't know. But it's like you warned me about the beginning, but I was like, no, it's it's fine. I liked it. I liked like the little bee that was like, oh, I'm gonna guide you on this journey. I'm a psychic bee or fly or whatever, and he like gives you a shield and all that. And he's like, I'm gonna die. Bleh. And he's like, Do you want me to repeat what I said after he died? I thought that was all really funny for, for what it was. I mean, it is funny, but like when you go to it five times and you start noticing how slow it is and how like. Oh, yeah, no, I wouldn't want to go through it five times. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, like, I played five times just the beginning. Like, the first time I played it until the emulator cr crashed on me, it was like... I got into, like, the second boss. Like, into the happy coat, I believe. Mm -hmm. And, like, um, yeah. the third time, it, like, the second time I had to restart it, and it crashed right before the first boss. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna try it once again. And the third time it crashed, like... Right after the bee died, and I was like, this is not gonna happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. And I was, so did you never finish Earthbound? No, I like, by the fifth time I did, it did start working on me, and like, I did go through it. 
but like I never got through the ending I basically stopped like I think it was like right before um, Naz and the gangs lost their bodies because oh, okay they like right at the end yeah they became like robots and stuff and I was like I don't care anymore <laughs> So like I started watching this stream from like some guy called uh, some call me Johnny or some shit like that. I saw the ending and I was like, holy shit, there's a fetus in the background. So yeah, that that, that that's another thing we need to get into. Uh, that that ending with Gygus is really cool. Like I uh I played the first mother and I plan to eventually get into the second mother. I had a similar experience to you actually. Um. I was playing Earthbound, and I save pr pretty regularly when I use my emulator. It's actually fairly stable, so I don't have that many problems with it. But when I was uh, playing it this one time, I got to the desert area, and uh, I don't know, I was running around, must have had two or three hours worth of RPG grinding and looking at stuff and whatnot, <laughs> and uh, a lightning storm was hitting my house and my power went out. <laughs> Really? And I lost two or three hours in it, and I it's just kind of one of those moments where you're like, well, I'm not touching that game until I care again. No. And that's exactly what I did, is, is just like five months later, I finally was like, I, you know, I was stuck in my camper, and I was like, well, there's nothing else to do. Guess I'll finish Earthbound. Oh, guess I'll finish Earthbound. <laughs> oh, man, that, that's the best plot. Yep. But, but... But, like, it, it's nothing against the game's problem. I thought it was charming enough. Uh, I've always found JRPGs somewhat therapeutic. You clearly... There's something about it that I find annoying. I'm sure it, part of it's the grind, right? Yeah, but, like, Earthbound, I think it circumvents that problem, that problem fairly well. Because it, it has, like, this stuff when you're walking around, like, weaker enemies, the battle just ends right away. Oh, yeah, that was really cool. You could get, like, sneak attacks, and immediately you get the... You kill the enemy, and then you get all the benefits that would be if you actually did the game. Yeah. Yeah, that was re really cool. And uh, that's another thing. is uh, I didn't want to go through the Earthbound series specifically because everyone says it was good. I wanted to go through the Earthbound series because as a person who really likes indie games, I was curious because so many are, like, inspired from it. So I was curious where this well of inspiration was coming from. So I got to it, and after I played it, I get a lot of the references where a lot of, like, a lot of, uh, what's, what's the word? Design choices some of the indie games I played make make sense to me now because they were references to Earthbound, or they were inspired by it. So you remember Off? Yeah, yeah. So, like, the better is a better because Ness uses bats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The also, they had auto-fight mechanics. Yeah, pretty much that. And Off, too. And the auto fight mechanics and off are like a thousand times better than uh, fucking Earthbound. Earthbound's auto fight is terrible. Have you ever used it? I never touched. I that used option. it once just to. I used it once to confirm the fact that it sucks, and it did. It just it doesn't use any uh, psychic abilities. It just pure uh, weapon damage, pure straight damage. Ah, but I mean, like, if you are. If you're just grinding for the sake of it, then you just put like the auto fighting and it does the job of pressing A for you. I mean, I guess so. But at that point, am I just playing a clicker? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cookie clicker here. <laughs> oh man. By the way, no, have you no. ever. But I don't mean to rag on the game too much. I actually did like. I thought it had a pretty awesome uh, sense of comedy to it. I think it was pretty lighthearted, and there were a lot of moments that I thought were pretty neat. Like, every time I got a new character, it was treated with not a, hey, I found this random person that wants to join my game like it is in a lot of JRPGs. There's normally, like, a whole pan over to see this other person who you're psychically reaching out to, and you have to control them as they reach the other game to help them. <laughs> that was true for a lot of them, and I thought that was really neat. Like. Oh, it also built a character behind, like, uh, I can't remember his name. Is it Jeff? I think it's Jeff. Jeff is like the glasses nerdy guy. Yeah, it built a character behind Jeff and who he was and where he came from, and it uh, built a character behind Pooh. Oh, whose name is Pooh. His name is fucking Pooh, man. Everybody points the that. The game was borderline racist, right? I, it's not just me. I know it was a different time, but it's 1995 when the game was made, but some of the stuff in it, I was like, uh, this would not fly. So, like, in my I think the whole idea of the game is to be like um, what Japanese think that America is the sort of like uh, cartoony style you can say sort of kind of racist kind of style okay yeah I can see that because like that explains why you walk around why? and you beat up hippies it's kind of like yeah and now that I'm a hippie yeah, a I don't point. know what to feel about that 
My, my favorite part about beating up the hippie is instead of saying you slayed it, it says it turned back to normal. That made me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but like, it says the same things about the cops, so... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> what does that say? <laughs> I don't know, I think it's uh, some sort of political you know, commentary. <laughs> Oh, I thought the enemies were interesting, and another thing I thought was cool, my favorite part of the game was the zombie-infested area. I can't remember the name of the town. It was like the second town. Tucson, I think, was the name. Tucson or whatever, where they, like, you had to slap down a bunch of basically rat traps that, like, <laughs> stuck them to the ground. It was like- And then set the place on fire. It was like glue paper or something. <laughs> like yeah, they're- put the like, I, I know we're- I, I feel like we're being too hard on it. Like, for a 1995 game, there's a bunch of cool shit that happened in it. I can see why people gravitate toward it. Like, there was the whole coffee, like, drug hallucination world that you went to for a while there, where yes meant no, and no meant yes. Oh man, like, it has been like a really long time since I played this game, but I vividly remember, like, a dream world- a dream world where, like, everybody's Ness? Or something? I don't. I don't. I, I, well, like hmm, everybody's I'm wearing not, his clothes or his pajamas. I don't know. Some shit like they 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 had a they had a moment where Ness got knocked out once you get the final note, and uh, Ness dreams of like this world, and they're all praising Ness and stuff. Oh, oh uh, yeah, fucking, it was that. Yeah, it's probably that. That that's when uh, the boss of that level is your dark inner self, which I thought, you know, maybe they're gonna go for some deep commentary, and they really didn't. There was <laughs> there was nothing there. Oh, you did one hit sea monsters though. That was pretty neat. <laughs> but I mean, it's like uh, when you think Earthbound is going for a deep philosophical social commentary, it's really not. Yeah, that yeah. I like that's the thing. Yeah, but it but it's quirky because of that. It it like has all these foundations of being like this deep and philosophical thing, but like it wasn't until Mother Tree that they actually went full on it. Yeah. Uh, you never played yeah. Mother Tree, did you? Not not yet. I will eventually. We will find out who Lucas is and what he does. I already got some of it spoiled for me, but just the beginning. So. Oh, trust me, Mother Tree is like miles better than Earthbound. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. I mean, it's still an RPG, and, like, I feel like I didn't enjoy it as much as everybody, but I feel like it resonated a lot more with me. But, uh, I don't know. That That's another thing, though. <laughs> yeah. And Oh, man. There, there were some things that I, I like that it called back to Mother 1 with, though. And I know I'm gonna, like, when you go into Ness's dream world, you see, like, the Birdmen, <laughs> which were a reference to the Birdmen in the original Earthbound that had, like, there's, I'm, I'm not sure how much you remember, but it was, like, a little house, and you would say, hey, come with me, and they're like, we're destined to come with you and help you. And you would go through this whole thing, and you would grind with them because Mother 1 is 90% grind, 10% game. <laughs> um, oh man, and, that, uh, <laughs> that's so true though, it's not even funny. But like, you would kill them all off eventually, and there was like 7 or 8. And in Mother 2, you could do the same thing as you're trying to get to uh, the area to fight your boss. And uh, instead of them being like, yeah, okay, let's join you up, like they were very normal. They're like, even in uh, Mother 1, when you get the last bird man, he's like, Finally, it's my chance to do it. In Mother, uh, in, uh, uh, Earthbound, you get, like, the second or third one, and he's basically like, okay, you're being a dick, quit killing us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, it, it was pretty genius. Uh, that's all Earthbound's dialogue right there. Yeah. Yeah. It, like, it knows it's a game, it knows it's, like, a piece of media, and it's, it takes full advantage of that, and I think that's where all the sense of humor comes from. No, definitely. And I can't imagine, I wish I played this game when I was, well, I would have been one, but I wish I would have played this game when it was still a new thing and it was doing all these new cool stuff. Cause there's so many different things that I bet would have blown my mind if I was playing, if I only had the other RPGs to reference because you're, at that time. Because you're like, oh my God, I'm fighting the blue KKK. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, but then there's like, you have the standard writing of everyone, but then you get to Saturnville and they have like the handwritten crazy stuff and they all end it with Zoom and stuff. Oh, the Tammy Village. And then you get, yeah, the Tammy Village. <laughs> and the, the, we'll get, we'll get back to that in a minute, but, uh, and then you'll get to like the underground area with like all the shy guys and then you go above ground where you fight like, uh, T-Rexes and all these dinosaurs and stuff. But instead of showing of like this giant sprite, you're just tiny sprites and you're walking around this little area. Oh man. That was also genius. That was really cool. I bet 
Uh, and like there's in reality final all this in reality Final Fantasy 3 for the like the original Japanese one for the NES did that first when you were go tiny like I think it was the first game that did that that you go tiny oh cool yeah I didn't know that I never played Final Fantasy 6 slash 3 no no it's just Final Fantasy 3 like the Japanese one oh the Japanese one okay I think I tweeted out like some picture yeah I tweeted out some pictures you can choose your teammates and I made one you. Oh, you renamed? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Cool. I'm still writing you in, uh, fucking... Breath of the Wild. Uh, Breath of the Wild. You died once, but we both died, so it's okay. <laughs> okay, it's okay then. At least I didn't die alone. But yeah, anyway, I wanted to revisit the game because of, uh, I know I'm continuing the thought earlier, but because of all the indie games that were inspired by it. Like, I literally pro there's, like, maybe six or seven I can think of that are aware to me, and I'm sure there's shit tons more. Yeah, I'm Like, there's Off, there's, uh... Undertale. Undertale, there's, uh, but, but, what's up? Lisa, there's, uh... Uh, funeral for a moon funeral. I can't even remember the name of it. I feel like there's, every there's... I feel like every weird indie game that comes out is inspired by Earthbound. Because Earthbound was so fucking weird. Yeah, I mean, for the time, it, it was made by a guy. It in, went in reality. Earthbound. It, it was made by like a guy that didn't program games. He just wanted to tell like a story. <laughs> it was like a Japanese yeah, celebrity. Yeah, and it, yeah, yeah. It was so it's so weird. Like, when you have coffee and whatnot, and, like, you go into this deep philosophical conversation about how far you've come at this point. I mean... It's just, it's just, it's just a weird game. <laughs> like, you didn't even ask for it. It just kind of happens. Yeah, it's like, uh, how every battle screen is like a fucking LSD trip. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's another thing that a lot of the weird stuff that happens with the games. Like, with Lisa, I com when I did a review on it, if I would have known this, I would have mentioned it in the review. But, uh, when I did Lisa, I said... The music sounds weird and awful, and I don't know why. It's because it was referencing Earthbound. It sounds it weird and awful. Songs. Yeah, yeah, that's, there's like one or two songs that are maybe good. Maybe. <laughs> maybe, yeah. But, I always, I, w in, I always it, fought that, yeah, but, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but like, I always thought that the songs in Earthbound were shit. And that's one of the things, like, everybody... Like, there's, like, two songs that appeared in Smash Brothers that I like, and the rest, it all sucks. Yeah. But, like, people are gonna no, no. tell me off in the comments, so <laughs> whatever. Well, no, no one watches these, so you're fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, my God. The Runaway 5 skits were neat, I guess. Uh, oh, man, that's what, like, that's what I was going to say. Uh, the Blue Brothers reference. I think it was, like, one of my most memorable parts when playing this because like I I really like the runaway I really like the the fucking blue blues brothers Jesus Christ and it's like when I see a reference like this so so in your face like that I think it was like really really charming yeah I really liked uh, that part and I like the uh, uh, <laughs> they they're really bad at keeping track of their money and they kept getting in debt and couldn't <laughs> leave uh, you see, I think Earthbound works, like, uh, personally for me, I know people are gonna disagree with me, but like, it works better as a story, because like, I'm not a big fan of RPGs, and like, even if this game has a lot of cool mechanics, like, the gameplay itself wasn't enough. That's my main thing. Yeah, it definitely, it was just, ma it's just magic and physical attacks, there wasn't very many things that were different. I thought the Jeff couldn't use uh, magic, but you could repair stuff that he could continuously use throughout battles. I thought that was pretty neat. I never used that. Um, oh my god, it's like the best thing. I got Jeff a bazooka that like did a lot of damage to one person and did surrounding dam or damage to people surrounding that person. <laughs> it was literally the best thing. Like it continued to be like the best move for a long time. Dude, I got the pool sword. <laughs> The pool sword is like the best weapon of the game. Did you get it? The what? Uh, like there's like the poo one... sword? No, I never got it. I got everything that was poos ex or poos except <laughs> the sword. Because like it's the only the weapon I think he... because of it. <laughs> because like I think it's the only weapon that he can get, but it's like <laughs> the rare drop. Nobody can get it, and it's like the funniest thing ever. I mean, it sucks as a game mechanic, but you know. For the laws, man. My god, that sucks. That's bullshit. <laughs> yeah, that's... <laughs> I mean, I did... 
But I, I was so pissed. I, I spent all that time, like, after I got Poe, and I was like, oh my god, he's so underleveled. Let's go to an area that I can easily beat up people up and level him up. And then he was still shit. <laughs> I was like, Poe, you're an item bitch for the next rest of the game. Uh, Phoenix down everyone that dies. Thanks. Phoenix down. <laughs> Uh, uh, man, I don't know, man, I can't remember that if it, it was like in this game or like in Mother Tree, but like, uh, there's like, uh, items that you can use as a weapon, like usable items, like bombs and such. Yeah, yeah, no, that was, uh, that's Mother, Mother 1, no, or, excuse me, Earthbound. Oh, that's Earthbound as well, okay, because yeah. like in Mother Tree, you're gonna see later, uh, there's like a character that his only thing is that he can use usable items. No, 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 that's what I was talking about with Jeff, yeah. Oh, yeah, but like... I... He got he got a weapon and then he got like an assortment of different items he could use over and over again. Oh, uh, yeah, fucking, I'm remembering everything wrong. It's all good, we got this. That's what Just Finish is for, for remembering. Oh, <laughs> uh, but like I haven't played this game in like two years, three. So, yeah. 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 Either way, uh, well, I'm I'm glad I, I'm glad I played it. It's interesting to see all the inspiration that the game came from. I mean, I, it I think came from this game. I think the beginning, like the first half of the game, was like the best part of the game. <laughs> but then it kind of became yeah, like definitely. It kind of became like the charming moment starting dying out, and I was like, all right. And then I didn't also, even finish like, it. Also, like the secret sanctuaries just happened one after another. It was like. For a while there, it was like uh, four or five hours of gameplay, and then you find a s secret sanctuary. I'm probably overstating it, but there was a long section of time. But then, like when you get halfway through all the sanctuaries, it was just like one after another. You go here, you go there. Okay, what I honestly think like... is that they ran out of ideas. Maybe <laughs> that's completely <laughs> possible. Ah, give me a They're break. Like, this uh... is like the vision of a. This is the vision of like only one man that is not used to making games. He made like mother. And that's that. I mean, he made a good game. Don't get me wrong. I think he made a great game. But like, you know, but, you, you gotta you gotta have ideas. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I I'm trying to think of where we go from here. You you had a you were talking about uh, what you thought the meaning behind Earthbound was earlier on Twitter. We had the spat about it that brought this video along. You want to reiterate that? Uh, no, let's do this video and never mention it. <laughs> oh, did you not want to? <laughs> no, just... I, I want to have a conversation. I didn't want to argue. I just wanted to say. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so like, uh, what I think the meaning behind Earthbound is, I just think it's a silly game. If I'm going to be more honest than I should, I just think it's like a <laughs> silly game. <laughs> it's like nothing I, more I than... I think so too. Yeah, but like... If we're gonna go with themes, we'll have like story bits and all. I think it's all, like all about growing up, you know, like leaving your family behind, or like not even leaving your family behind because you call them because you get homesick. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But like, yeah. it was like <laughs> that. That was a mechanic that was irritating. <laughs> no, it was fucking irritating. But like, I can't. I guess they did that because because of story purposes. But like. I don't know, I think that's backwards. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it definitely didn't work from a game mechanic standpoint, but I think it did build Ness's character from a story standpoint. Like, oh, he's still just a kid, he gets homesick. Yeah, I mean, he's just a 10-year-old I mean, it... beating hippies up. <laughs> yeah, basically, no, yeah, but, but like, you don't really think of it, because, like, you don't see a lot of expression from the people's faces, from your character's faces, and Ness is one of the few characters that doesn't really talk too much. And the fact that he gets homesick actually does, like, humanize him just a little bit. Which was probably quite a bit for a uh, JRPG at the time. Yeah, I mean, I heard a lot of people praising this, but, like, for... Uh, yeah, talking... it's definitely... Uh, don't get me wrong, I, 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 I agree, I think it's completely backwards, but I understand why they did it, is all I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. I think that's my that sums up all my thoughts about Earthbound. I understand why this ga why people like this game, why this game uh, why does things this way, but I just don't like it nearly as enough as other people do. Fair enough. But anyway, we were getting on to uh, uh, what you thought. Oh, the mini. Oh, it, it's yeah, about yeah. growing up. It's about growing up. That's what I think it is. 
That's why the okay. fucking final boss is a fetus. Fair enough, I guess. And, and I had to spat on Twitter. It's hard hard to talk about it in 140 characters. I don't remember. It was 140. Oh, uh, I didn't take that as an argument. I was just like, you know... No, no, no. It's hard to have a conversation about it is all I'm saying. Yeah. But it's like... No. Gaigas, what I think Gaigas is, is like the combination of everything bad that like everything that's backwards oh yeah everything that like uh, it's it's like something that's stuck in time that doesn't want to grow up that doesn't want to that doesn't want to move on you know that doesn't want to mature that's why he was like a fucking fetus in this game and like a, a sperm in the first one or a testicle yeah yeah testicle maybe yeah i, I mean i totally get what you're saying and it goes behind what uh, Gygus is a uh, sane, a name by sense the worm. He's so involved with power and all this darkness that he's gone completely mad, basically. He's basically ravenous. He can't think for himself. That was basically said in the game, but um, by Porky. Who Porky gets away, I never under- yeah, that, that's another thing. But, but and, and I understand where you're getting it, and uh, honestly, I don't think there, there's a meaning to the game, but I, I can see where that comes from, but I feel like there's more signs pointing to the opposite, that it's about enjoying your childhood and growing up. One, because Guy, it's no secret, Gygus was inspired by, I forget the name of the dude, the Japanese artist or whatever, but it was from a, it's inspired from a childhood traumatic experience he had. Do you know this, or like... Oh my god, my. I don't know. Uh, well, it's from a uh, childhood traumatic experience where he accidentally walked into, I think it was a movie theater or a movie of some sort, and he witnessed a rape scene. Ah, uh, no, I, I know about that. it's what he remembered from this. It's what he remembered from it. It's why Gygus says fucked up things like it feels good and uh, uh. screams ness, ness, ness over repeatedly. Yeah, creepy subject. Which is another thing I yeah. felt got ruined for me, is I already knew what Gygus was. That would have been fucking awesome if I was a little kid playing this game. Would have scared the shit out of me, <laughs> that ending. I mean, you know, I also... F I, I don't know what to say about the rape scene. <laughs> oh, the... Uh, yeah. The, the, no, 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 uh, but what I was... Uh, let me finish my thought before you reply. Sorry. Okay. I, I, I went on a different tangent. I'm, like, all over the place. Sorry. <laughs> no, I do but, that a lot, but, uh, too. But, uh... And there's so many different other things. Like, you go back home to talk to your parents, and everyone literally says, I can go back to being normal at the end. Poe goes back to finish his life, and, uh... Paula goes away, and Jeff goes back to school, and you go back to your mom. When that's where it takes off from the end, is you're at home with your mom. And there are so many other things that are probably things that suck about maturity that seem to go across like talk about the happy happiness is like they're all just trying to make everyone happy and like there's the other dude that's obsessed with greed and has the statue hidden away all these different mechanics and stuff that I feel like don't point to that <laughs> ah, okay let's go let's get to like a uh, top point I think both of us are right in our own regard, and I think the meaning of the game itself goes into that, that um, growing up is scary, and enjoying your childhood to, the, to its fullest is essential, so you can grow up and not be a fucked up, not be like as fucked up as the other characters. Yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe. If there is a meaning at all to the game, probably. I, I mean, it probably doesn't, but like, fucking, you know... <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> it's hard to tell. <laughs> like, we're discussing, like, 10 minutes <laughs> about, like, a game with no meaning. <laughs> Basically, yeah. Yeah. Which is like, it's it's like when I go back to Lisa. It's like, everyone, when, when they talk about Lisa, is like, the game's about... Um, abuse and the effects it can have and how cyclical it is and I'm like, eh, I, mm, I'm not sure if it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The thing is, as an art piece, it can be about those things. And at the same time as it's an art piece, it's also a game. And as a game, it's not about those things. It's like, uh, art becomes its own life once someone observes it. It's like, uh, I think back to, I don't know, Silent Spring or... Not the Silent Spring. Silent Spring? But, uh, 
No, I'm trying to think of a video. The jungle, do you know the jungle? I guess it's maybe not as important. The jungle? But it what was like, the fuck? It's like, a, it's a book, it's a socialist book, uh, or communist book, rather, written back in the day that, uh, before there were regulations behind a bunch of stuff, basically. Oh, huh, interesting. And it was about, it was about, it's an American thing, it was basically written by someone who was trying to talk about the, uh, bourgeois and all that stuff, but they cited all the fucked up shit that was ha happening in these food factories, and people freaked out about the food regulations and didn't worry about the common, or communist <laughs> messaging. And the book became popular because of that, but, like, all the thing the artist wanted to portray got completely thrown aside and everyone worried about how their food was being made in these factories. What the fuck? It's kind of like one of those moments where you can make, an artist can make a piece, but it's up to the person that perceives it is what the art really is. It's kind of the whole back and forth. There's kind of like a double life to art. And we're getting really meta here, but I'm just saying that if Earthbound didn't mean to have a message behind it, a lot of people feel like there is one, and that means there is a message behind Earthbound, is all I'm saying. Yeah, I think it, like, it depends whether or not you're analyzing the game as an art piece or a game. And as a critic, we kind of have to do both, but like mainly we focus on the game part, and that's why I think we don't find like a real meaning to it. Yeah, that's a good point, but... Uh... When you have to be a critic, yeah, that, that's true with any medium. You criticize of how it's made and what all the pieces that make it and how all they work together along with the meaning behind the game or whether or not it's uh, meaning is portrayed well enough. Yeah, and also if pink, yeah, fucking hell. And also if people think I'm bullshitting by saying this, I can only say that like I'm, in, I'm an intern at like a game making course. And, like the first rule of making a game is thinking about it as a game like that's that's all and not that there's necessarily rules to making a game but like that's the normally the first thing that people think of when making it has to be a game yeah you fucking it's not like you're fucking you get like a story and you're just trying to tell it it can be that but like in most cases it isn't mm -hmm. uh okay i i think i said all about all of what i wanted to say do you have any other thoughts? Uh, guys, this is just a weird game. You go around as a 10-year-old kid with a baseball cap beating up hippies and cops and, you know, whatever, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm... You're so trying not to be mean about it. I think the game's neat. I, I really do. Like, uh, I think it aged well enough to be played, but I'm not sure if the mechanics itself, the things that actually make it a JRPG, have stood the test of time. I don't like JRP the like I don't like JRPGs in general, so like I don't know how I can criticize that. How's Persona Five? Uh, you see, the, <laughs> the dungeon crawl, <laughs> uh, the fucking the dungeon crawling. It's it's just so. <laughs> I have so many problems with that, but at the same time, it's like the best game I've ever played in my life. <laughs> it's like. All right. I don't know how to explain it, <laughs> but All right, anyway, well. I also think, um, the last thing I wanted to say, I think it's fucked up that Nintendo just diss every single fan of this series that tries to do something out of like passion and love and care for this series, they just go ahead and turn off, they just turn down every single project. They do that with all the projects though. <sighs> it's, but, uh, well? I mean... I know they need to do that, and like I'm always very civil about it. I understand why it, need, it needs to be done. They need to turn off the turn down fucking turn down the projects, the fan stuff because you know brand recognition. They need to protect themselves and all of that. But like, man, people are so desperate on the internet saying that they love the Mother series and they want to make projects with it, they want to show their love and if Nintendo doesn't explore it further, they want to explore it. But like, Nintendo is just like, you know what, fuck them. <laughs> hey, fu you yeah. like my games? Fuck you, man. Yeah. Basically that. And I don't know, I was excited for Mother 4, that was like a fan project that people were making, people were making but like... It got turned down, and I didn't know. I didn't know about it. And like when I knew about it, I was like, "Huh, 
I guess I'm never getting that game then. This is no AMR2. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, at least I got AM2. AM no, it was like AM2R. At least I got a AM2R, man. At least I got that. I, I, I completely understand why Nintendo does it. Uh, but yeah, I, I wish they. I wish there was another way. <laughs> I mean, there is another way. It's just the Nintendo, you know, they don't know how to do stuff <laughs> regarding gamers. <laughs> I mean, I don't. I literally think it's because they're protecting the series, and I think they will eventually make another mother game. They clearly give enough of, uh, shit about it to put it on the SNES Classic. That shows that they recognize the amount of loyalty behind it. Okay, I hate to but... like. Um... Turned out, I hate to like crash on your dreams or whatever, but like the creator of the Mother series said that they're not, they're never making a new one. Oh, are they? Yeah, they are never doing that. Damn it. So, yeah. <laughs> but yet again, people change their minds, so I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe money comes into the account. But all I'm saying is they, Nintendo clearly recognizes that Mother or the Earthbound series does have clout. Yeah. Anyway, um, I think this is it. Yeah, I think this is it. Oh, well, thanks for joining me, Rick. Where can they find you and your content? Oh my god, you're gonna do like that end screen stuff? Yeah, yeah, I am. We're probably currently in the end screen right now. Uh, no, but like, it's only 20 seconds, so... <laughs> yeah, I know, and we're wasting it right now. <laughs> okay, so there's like a video that I uploaded uh, today as the they were recording this is like about skyward sword game design and i think it's like really fun if you want to check it out you can you can find them over at the henry game show yeah so i guess this is it right yeah this is it thanks for joining me rick bye bye